<laughs> you didn't have Mexican to copy the guy. accent as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so you know, um, last week how we were talking about matching up dead bodies through the dental records and stuff. Mm. I did ask, and um, they said it is possible to do it with like their note because their notes are pretty extensive. Dent- dental yeah. notes are really extensive, and x rays so it's possible. But also, something I didn't know mm. in some cases, you can extract DNA from teeth. Can you? Yeah, That's I didn't know that. How do they do that? Do you know? I don't know. Well, I, th- I thought I was sounding creepy enough, so I decided I wouldn't yeah. press him any further for now. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll ask him at the next Christmas party, or I'll ask someone else. So <laughs> it's, I ever level out the creepiness. Yeah. I, it could... probably didn't sound good, me starting the conversation with, I'm not going to try and kill anyone, so please don't be creeped out. But how do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. You, you must have such a reputation. Yeah. Credit to him, he did not seem creeped out. Didn't he? No. And then he's a weird one. Anyway, <laughs> also, before... Like, I, I should probably mention, um, before I forget, we got tweeted about the Robin Hood episode by a guy named Paul. Yeah. Um, apparently, George Osborne is the modern-day equivalent of Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> That made me chuckle when I read it. I was like, I have to mention that. I mean, that was it. It was just that one-line statement. And I was like, yeah, okay. And he does actually listen, I think, because he's followed us for a little while now. Ah. Okay. But doesn't Os- doesn't Oswald steal from the poor and give to the rich? That's, like, kind of yeah, the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite. But, yeah. Ah. Was he being ironic? Then? Possibly. It made me chuckle, though. Yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> anyway. Mm. So, um, what have you been up to, Matthew? I mean, I know we had a long conversation before we started recording. <laughs> um, well, I've just been studying, really, economics, yeah. which I wouldn't advise to many people. It's not that I much fun. I wouldn't have advised, advised that to anyone either. Yeah. I, I, I've never even done it, but maths was more than enough for me to deal with. Yeah, it's pretty much, there's a bit of maths in there, so you wouldn't like it for sure. Yeah, Probably. like, I can do maths, I just prefer not to. Yeah. I, uh, not, I don't mind doing, like, the fun stuff, like, the more interesting stuff, like the algebra, where, like, letters mm. come into it, but maths, like, eight times eight, who gives a shit? Use a calculator. Like, that's stuff you don't okay, need to know, yeah. because you've got a calculator for it. Yeah, but it's interesting to know that beforehand. Yeah, but you've I got think. a calculator for that. You don't need to know that stuff. Like, I don't actually know why you need to know algebra, but... You can't use a calculator to figure that... Well, you can use a calculator to figure it out, I guess, but it takes more thought. Mm. I I was a wizard with my timetables. I I, I learned them pretty quickly. I can't remember. I was quite impressed with myself. That's the one thing I I was good at in maths. I remember in school, I don't know if you had it, but um, our classes were in sets. So Mm. you had the high set, middle set, and then the low set. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was in the high set of everything throughout most of my schooling... But the maths, I was in this middle set. But yeah. apparently the middle set was too easy for me. So they kept trying to put me in the top set. And like I'd always end up in the top set. And I'm just like, I really don't want to do it. Please, just leave me <laughs> alone. I don't want to be challenged. Can you not just let everything be easy for me? Yeah. And then, no, they wouldn't go for it. And they got me to do extra maths for the GCSE as well. What the hell? They made me do statistics. Oh, God, that's yeah, horrible. And French. First of all, they made me do French because they tricked me into thinking I had to do it anyway. And then I looked around the class and it's like, there's ten people here. I didn't have to do this. And then they were like, well, with French, you get to do statistics. I'm just like, I'm sorry, you're making me do a language and maths. Um, this is yeah. not on. And they said that I couldn't move, so fuck them. How do French and t- statistics go together? I don't know. I really don't know. It's not... I, I think that was an incentive to get people to do French, saying, <laughs> oh, you can do this extra GCSE. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's such and, an incentive. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it's just, I just thought I had to pick a language, and French is the only one I did, so I picked it, and I looked at the class, and I was like, I didn't have to do a language. No one else is here. Mm. Like, why am I here? I did well in French, though, well enough. I mean, I don't know how much of it I remember. I haven't gone to France since, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But then whenever I went to France, like, all the French people would speak English to me. Yeah, that's the problem I found. So you don't go to France to practice your French. Yeah. You go to France to watch French people get excited because they get to practice their English. Yeah. I, the, the memory I have of going to France was I went with a school once 
and I went to order a burger from somewhere. I had to mm. literally just point because I didn't know what the French for burger was. <laughs> ah, I don't, and then I don't they asked I know that either. And I was like, I just said we oui, because that was literally one of the only French words I know. That's why, that's the only time I'd go into like McDonald's or Burger King or something because you could just say the number. Yeah. Of what you want. <laughs> I, want I want an un. I want a deux. I want a trois. <laughs> I want a quatre, cinq, six. That's a lot of food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like food though? <laughs> Not at McDonald's or Burger King, though. Well, I don't know. It depends. I'm a bit of a food snob sometimes. Mm. When I was in Berlin, we were so hungry in the morning. We were tr- it's a Sunday, and we were trying to find anywhere that was open. And Burger King was literally the only place open. Mm. And you can't imagine how happy we were to get in there. No, I just had a bad experience with McDonald's. Like, mm. I never used to like eating their food anyway, but I always want to go because of the Happy Meal. And then one day, my dad just wasn't having it. He was just like, okay, you bought the Happy Meal, you actually have to eat the food. Yeah. And um, this was in the middle of us shopping, right? And, yeah. well, because my uh, I, I didn't get the chicken nuggets one, I got the fish fingers one. So first of all, I don't like McDonald's anyway. I don't eat seafood. My dad mm. made me eat that food. Ooh. And then I went and puked in a shoe shop, and my dad <laughs> had to clear it up. <laughs> so he, had to and he never, <laughs> yeah, he never made me eat McDonald's again. <laughs> wow! Well, he had to clear it up because it was someone else's shop, and I puked in it. And yeah, yeah, it was but his I fault. still think they clear up though most of the time. Well, I think he must have felt guilty, and he went and bought loads of stuff and paper towels and everything, and cleared it up. Oh, well, that's nice actually. Yeah, my dad's quite a nice guy actually. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, Burger King is so much better than McDonald's though these days. I have never. I had Burger King once, and it was very mayo-y. Burger King was shit for a while, but it's come back recently, and it's actually like the burgers are actually really nice. Mm. Like proper oh, well. burgers, not just McDonald's shit. McDonald's burgers are like tiny now. Yeah. And a Big Mac is so small, it's like... Yeah, wouldn't you? Know. I know it's cheap, but don't you have to get quite a few things to actually fill yourself up? Yeah. yeah. Really, like, it's tiny. Mm. You know what I was watching last night? You know, Line of Duty has come back. Line of Duty? Yeah. What one's that? It's a BBC show. It's a, sort of about police oh. corruption. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that somewhere. Advertise. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't watch it when it was on TV the first time around, but I watched the first mm. two series on Netflix. Yeah. And then season three came out, and it's still very good. It's about police corruption, Matt. Oh, police corruption. I, I See, I was going to do something about making bread. That's my segue. Making bread? Miller. <laughs> okay. See, but police <laughs> corruption. You, oh, oh, that's why you wanted to talk about McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not really, but... I could have done, I suppose, to make myself look clever. Yeah, so this episode is about making bread. Now, Yay. intro music. Welcome to the Brooks Deduction Podcast. Where we talk about stuff. Introduction. Yeah. That's it, that's a better French accent for the introduction. <laughs> It, anyway. it, it does sound like I'm listening to someone going mad, you know, right now. <laughs> I am going a little bit mad. <laughs> I was like, why am I doing it in French? Like, why did I even think about doing it in French? If you want to talk okay. to yourself for a bit, that, that, that's fine, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just listen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what is this episode about? It is about someone who wants to make bread. Yeah. But he can't. Yeah, the miller's son, Clayton. Yeah. He wanted to make bread in 1990. But he can't because he's he, dead. Yeah, he, he's dead. Maybe he died at the age, ripe old age of 17. <laughs> mm. So um, we should probably give you some sort of backstory. Without laughing uh, about it. About well, that. Yeah, let's try not to laugh, Matt. Yeah. Because I think there are some French Canadians in this story because his dad's name is quite French Canadian. Yeah. The, the, his parents are alive as well, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah they are, because they, they, still, and... they still go on about this. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, there's this 17-year-old boy named Clayton Miller who lived in New Waterford in Nova Scotia, which is in Canada, not Australia, Canada. 
Yeah. Nah, Canada. Yeah. I can't believe you thought it was in Australia. That's just... <laughs> what the fuck? I can't believe you did. I'm supposed to be the one more. shit at geography. Nova Scotia is clearly in Canada, Tarman. Really. Just <laughs> buy a map or something. But seriously, why do you think it was a straight... Okay, let's not get into that. Anyway, so as a 17-year-old boy would do, he went to a party where they binge drank in the middle of a fucking forest that was called The Nest in Nova Scotia. This party occurred on the 4th of May, 1990, Mm -hmm. and a police riot, not riot, raid, that's it, that's the word, a police raid swept in and broke all the party up, and they took away 10 people, they arrested 10 people, allegedly, took them back to the holding cell, blah, 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 Clayton Miller never made it home. And eventually, uh, well, I say eventually, two days later, a friend that he went to the party with named Dale McKinnon... He decided to go back to the nest with another friend of theirs and go looking for Clayton Miller, and they found him dead in a stream. And the official cause of death is alcohol consumption and hypothermia. Mm. And people, that seems clear cut, right? Yeah. Yes. Apparently not, because um, ever since his death, almost 16 years ago now, yeah, it'll probably be close to 16 years. It'll probably be, yeah, the 16-year anniversary. Would I, would I say 16? Why could, do I keep saying 16? It's 26 years ago. I'm a fucking yeah. idiot. Can't count. I can't do maths. <laughs> I'm glad we started the episode with our math talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't do maths, can't do French. Um, his parents, Gervais and Maureen Miller, hence why I think they're French-Canadian, or yeah. at least Gervais is, yeah. Um, they believe that his son didn't, their son, sorry, didn't die that way. And there was some sort of external force and some sort of police corruption and cover up behind it. Yeah. Um, or, mainly because, pardon? I was going to say, or even that the police had beaten him up. Yes. And there are a few rumours surrounding it. So I'll just touch upon it briefly and then we can go into it a bit later. Um, the main one that they hold up is a girl who isn't named one of Clayton's friends, Mm. she said that she was at the party with him and they hid together. She saw the police take him, beat him, and put him in a van. And the next thing she knew, she was at home and with friends. She was at home with friends and she called his parents, Clayton Miller's parents, to tell them that he was in police custody. That's number one. Number two is... A pair of cousins, also not named. I think the surname's Harrison, actually. That's the, that's the surname I got, but that was from, like, a second-hand or third-hand news source. So I'm mm. not sure if that's correct. But yeah. I think the cousins were Harrison. And they were bragging about beating a boy, beating the crap out of a boy in the same area where Clayton was found. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Yes. Yeah. That's number two. A, apparently, a, allegedly, this is very allegedly, a girl saw Clayton Miller in the police holding cell. But that I have a lot of thoughts on, so I will get into that later. <laughs> yeah, those are the main three reasons so, why they think there's some sort of massive conspiracy surrounding Clayton's death. Yeah. And also they feel that his body had unnatural marks on them, something that's not consistent with the cause of death he's been given. Yeah. And a couple of years ago, I think it was around October 2014, a former nurse, uh, what's, I didn't get her name, a former nurse, um, a retired nurse, reached out to the Justice Minister Lena Diab, yeah, Diab, sorry, <laughs> Diab, that's it. I thought it was something else after that, (laughs) Um, saying that there were irregularities in his autopsy, even though he had two, so irregularities in his autopsy. And Justice Diabo asked the Serious Incident Response Team to look into it and review the file, which they did in January last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's the quickest I've gone through the whole story, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. but actually, there's a lot more, actually, but I figured you might want to say something before I went into the next bit. Yeah, well, wasn't there two investigations just recently? 
That's um, what I seem to be reading. Too. I read the last one was in July, two th- not July, January-ish, 2015. Yeah. But the case has sort of never gone away. Yeah. There's been murmurings about things going on ever since his death. Mm. Well, do you want me to know, tell you what the serious incident response team said after they finished the investigation? Well, I kind of, I kind of got a bit of that from one of the articles I was reading. Mm. One, yeah. of, one of the investigations concluded that um, there was no evidence for actual any beating at all, or there was a lack of evidence. All right. Oh, I think I know what you mean by two investigations. Okay. Yeah. One was reviewing this actual case. The other one was reviewing an actual constable. I think that's what yeah. I mean. That may have been involved in it. Yeah. But they're quite linked together. So the statement I've got for the actual case is mm. there is no evidence to show that any police officer had any contact with Clayton Miller prior to his death. The evidence shows that Clayton Miller's death was an accident caused when he fell and passed out attempting to run from the police. He remained partially in a stream in a location unseen by anyone until two days later, having died from hypothermia. And yeah. that also links into the other one that you mentioned. Um, they were looking into Constable Darren Drinov's. Drinov's. Is that the one that you were talking about? It didn't, it didn't say his name. It just said that um, a police officer who'd withheld it evidence was okay, investigating. Okay, yeah, yeah, his name was Constable... I think it's Constable because it, they just had, like, the initials. So I don't mm. think they have the same titles as they have here, but it's CST. So I yeah. figured that meant constable, but then it's Canada, so I don't know if they've got constables. Yeah. So I'm just going to call him constable. So. And he'd they, been he'd been at the stream on the day yes. after the raid. Yes. But he didn't see the body. That was yes. What was, but he was. But upon further review, it was noted that he was like a hundred yards away from the stream and the yeah. location he was you wouldn't have really been able to see the body and his his story has remained consistent throughout the past 20 years. Yeah. 25 years. And I find it funny that this department looked into it because they can't actually try historic cases. They can't charge anyone. Yeah. And that's why they had to look into this Darren Drinovs. He's the only one that's still active, I think. He, they couldn't look into any of the people that were actually at the raid, the police officers at the raid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, they kind of believe his evidence was pretty convincing. Yeah, did you read the report that they they put out because they've put it on the internet? No, I didn't see that. I, I did you not? It's like forty eight pages long. Jeez, no, I didn't see I, that. <laughs> yeah, I read the summary and I read bits of the forty eight pages, but it seems pretty convincing to me. Yeah, <clears throat> and it also goes into all the rumours and the reason why people believe that it was a foul play. Mm. Why he died. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, where do I go from here? I don't know. Um, well, I, I was going to... I didn't know whether to mention... Because um, you, you said there was one nurse who said that there wasn't... Uh, there, was, there were signs of beating. Yes. But I, I was reading that um, there were seven other doctors... He concluded that there yeah. was no evidence of beating. The thing is with him, because I, I basically got... I did read the same articles. I, pro- I probably read the same articles as you, because there's really not that many out there. Yeah. But I got all my information from that report from the serious incident, incident response team. Yeah. So um, what happened was there were, they actually had two autopsies. The initial one, there were three doctors, mm. and they're the ones that first diagnosed... Well, uh, no, the cause of death was alcohol consumption and hypothermia. Mm. And then in 1993, there was a second autopsy with four doctors and they agreed with the previous statement. But the reason is mainly the mother because they saw their child's dead body. The the reason they don't agree with that cause of death is because of the bruising around the face and how he he was, it looked like he had some external injuries. But the bruising around the face, it's just the blood pooling up in one specific area and obviously he's dead. It's not going to start flowing again. It just yeah. ceases to move. Yeah, and this, that's what the bruising's from. Yeah, and apparently this is actually a common condition. 
Yeah. It's like liver mortis, it, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. Like and it's sort of like, you know, when you're tying like a thread around your finger yeah. and it starts to get discoloured. It's sort of like that, but you're dead. Yeah, so there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. Um, and also the other injuries, they could easily be from exposure or the fact that he was hot, he was so drunk, he was almost passed out at a party in the woods. Yeah. Like, like, even if you're not in the woods and you're drunk, you're going to end up hurting yourself. Yeah. Or hitting against something. And you won't notice because you're drunk. But he was in the woods. Of course, he was going to have, like, cuts and scrapes and stuff. And he was running away from the police. Yeah. So he's going to have marks on his body. He's going to be pretty frantic. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to run away, so... Yeah. And he ends up... Well, what happened is, um, as noted in the report... Um, what happened was that he was running away with his friend Dale McKinnon and he dropped his hat. So he went back to get it because he's drunk. <laughs> he went back to get it and then tripped and fell in the stream. Yeah. And his hat was found like 100 yards away. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because, like, I, I, didn't re- I didn't hear so much of this when I was... Like because you didn't like, read the report. The report is really in depth. Was it? Which is why, yeah, which is why, like, his parents, after the report came out, they said, well, clearly it hasn't been an in depth report. We should have expected this. It's a massive cover up. But I read it. It's really in depth. Yeah. Like, I just read, like, the summary, and that was eight pages long. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and the other 40 pages, I sort of skim read them because I'd gotten, like, all the notes and stuff I needed from the instruction. Yeah. But they had, like, specific timelines going on. It was actually really, really detailed. Yeah. So I can't see how people would say that they didn't actually look into it properly. Yeah. I think they did. And the fact they only looked into it because of rumours and speculation, not because of evidence. Yeah. Because there is no evidence. I mean, um, because I think the mother... She, the only, because one of the reasons she called was that testimony of that person who heard the Harrisons or something boasting uh, about. Yeah, because be- yeah, yeah, they're beating. like sister in law or someone reported them to the police and then the police didn't do anything. Apparently, yeah. the police didn't do anything. And um, so she reached out to the family. But hmm. the police did. They chased up two witnesses in 2002 and 2003. That's 12 and 13 years after. Clayton has yeah. died. So if it's a cover-up, they're not going to chase up anyone. Yeah. Like, why would they continue investigating? Yeah, if it was a cover-up, you'd feel they'd, they'd find a way of not investigating it somehow. Yeah, if it was a cover-up, they'd just be like, case closed, and they won't bother doing anything with it again. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, that's, it's just one person saying that, and you yeah, know, it's not actual evidence, it's just... Yeah, but- but also, I read an article... Well, again, like I said, it's the, the second, third-hand report of this um, this sister-in-law or someone to them. And they didn't even say who the person was, the twin... The, not the twins, the cousins didn't even say who they beat up. They just said they beat the crap out of some guy. Yeah. Could have been any guy. And it just so happens that Clayton Miller's body was found sometime after that. Yeah. So it could, they, maybe they did beat the crap out of someone, but there's a chance it might not be Clayton. Yeah. Did they even say they were at the party? Mm, I don't think so, no. Yeah. I think they said they were at the nest. But even so, there was about 60 people there. Yeah. So there were 60 people at the party. Yeah. So it could have been anyone they beat the crap out of. Or maybe or their young boys. Like, they like to play up whatever they do a lot. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times that you... Like, we exaggerate accomplishments we've made (laughs) just to sound better. Yeah. And they must have thought they sounded so cool. Yeah, also, they they did go round the next day saying they were bullshitting or something. Yeah, they did. Yeah. But then she... I think that... I can't remember what in law. I probably should have written down. But she said that, well, they were just drunk the night before and they were being more honest... They're like, so I don't understand the how people think that you're more drunk when you're honest. I think it could work either way, to yeah. be honest. Uh, like, some people get really honest, some people get really emotional, some people just carry on bullshit way more than they usually would. <laughs> you don't know how it's going to affect you. It affects everyone differently. Yeah. Silly sausages. 
Okay, the main one, I love how we went from back to front. The main one that actually sparked off these rumours mm. of police corruption was the girl that I mentioned the first time around yeah. that said that, that she was hiding with Clayton. So she, she, her account was that she was at the party with Clayton Miller. They were hiding. The police found them. They dragged him out. They beat the crap out of him, put him in a car and took him away to police custody. And then she somehow found her way home. She There's a gap there. It doesn't say how she got home. So I don't know if it, her thinking she's drunk or something like that. But mm. it, she ends up at home with her friends, frantic. She calls her par- calls Clayton's parents to report, to tell them that Clayton's been arrested and what's happened. But the friends that she was with... They said no. She was with them all night. She didn't go to the party. She had a crush on Clayton, which is why she called the house. She was calling for yeah. Clayton. So, and that has been conclusively, yeah, yeah, so, refuted since for the past 24 years. And she even retracted the statement as well. So that's the whole thing that started it off. Right. Did the Millers say that she'd phoned? I don't know. I think she did. I think they did. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That confusing. wasn't in the report. Uh, maybe they just dropped... She just drop-called them or something. Yeah. But if, if, like, if you were the parents and you're reading someone saying that they told you that your son was in... Like, I don't know. Like, in the report, it doesn't say that the parents picked up. Yeah. It just says she called them. So that could oh, mean so. that she called them and it rang out or whatever. Yeah. But her friends have said she just tried calling to talk to Clayton. So, yeah. obviously, she didn't get through to Clayton because we know he's dead. Yeah. So, maybe she just didn't get through. All I know is that she tried calling them. Yeah. But that's the whole thing that started off the rumours, and this came about after he'd been found and stuff. So, yeah, if it, if she, that actually had happened, and she did call them that night and told them that night what had happened, there would have been... It, this whole thing would have started up way before they found the body. Yeah. It wouldn't be because of the unusual markings. Yeah. It's, yeah, the parents would have kicked up a fuss long before. They would have gone down to the station to try and look for them. Yeah. Or look for Clayton. So I don't think she pi- they picked up. Because if they would have picked up, we would have known about that, definitely. Yeah. There would have been a Wikipedia page on this. Again, sorry. Yeah, it just... Yeah, that one doesn't make sense to me, kind of. No, it but, doesn't. But it's so inconsistent. Yeah. Also, like, it sounds like she's the only one that's seen him being taken away by police, isn't she? Well, the other one that I mentioned briefly before, um, this one is so flimsy, it's ridiculous. But there was a 15-year-old girl at the party, and admittedly, she was drinking a shit ton of vodka. Yeah. And all she had actually said is that she saw a guy in the prison, in the police cell, but... It was on a screen, black and white screen. Yeah. And she didn't actually say it was Clayton. She just saw a guy. It's a black and white screen, CCTV screen in 1990. Yeah. Like, CCTV now is pretty shit. Yeah. And black and white in 1990. So, obviously, the media sort of latched onto this and said that Clayton was in prison. They must have beat him and dropped him at the stream, which is probably why they didn't, well... What's his name? The police officer didn't see him on the 5th of May. Yeah. So they beat him to death and they dropped him there on the 6th of May. So Mm. that... But it all came from a girl saying... A drunk 15-year-old girl saying she saw a guy on a screen. Yeah. It's not... So the media just blew it out of proportion. You know, that's actually how I heard about this Clayton Miller case. I thought it was true. Because I was on one of those, like, list sites where users make lists. Yeah. And I was looking at it, and I saw Clayton Miller. That's the, disc- that's, that's the reason I found out about this case. I was like, ah, oh, he was seen in a Canadian prison, or jail cell, holding cell. But then his body was found two days later. Yeah. And pol- it's speculated that police put him there. So I don't believe that now. It made it sound much more interesting than in this case yeah. bloody is. That's the problem sometimes of reading... Yeah, but that's how I you do as that's how we get most of our content is me looking at those websites. True, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the problem. Like some people, they really want to believe that it is the case. 
Yeah, so uh, that writer must have thought, mm. yeah, this is conclusive evidence. I mean, in a way, there's good reason to, because it clearly does happen that people die in prisons because of police brutality. Yeah, but the but, easiest thing they could do is pretend it was one of the prisoners that did it. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's just, there's, there's no, like, there's hardly any evidence that he was there. And yeah, what I mean, I don't think there's a paper forward. trial. Pardon? Whatever, what evidence is put forward isn't nowhere near credible. It's not evidence. It's not sort of strong. faint, flimsy, unreliable eyewitnesses yeah. or statement account or witness accounts. Yeah. Um, because if people have been arrested, they have to sign in to like, yeah. and fill in forms. And I get that you could sort of lose paperwork, especially in 1990 when... You know, when they didn't have, like, computer technology where it saves and there's always a backup, mm. it was probably more, mainly just paper. But the ten friends, I'm assuming they were friends of him at the party, the ten people that were arrested said that they didn't see him, uh, see the police yeah. anywhere near him. They didn't see him in the jail cell. I get that maybe they were teenage kids and they were frightened because they'd seen the police beat the crap out of their friend. But it's been 25 yeah. years. Usually that would come out by now. Yeah. Usually you get over the fear or someone pays you enough money to tell the truth. Yeah. Also, you've just got to believe that so many people are involved in covering this up. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty There's much. a lot of police intimidation there. Like yeah. the doctors. It's, are, it's not just the police. Yeah. It's all the doctors. Not just the first set of doctors, the second set three yeah. years later. <laughs> yeah. I just... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is another thing I forgot to mention earlier. Well, this whole episode is a jumbled mess. We keep jumping back and forth, <laughs> don't we? Um, on the 5th of May, apparently some boys were walking up the stream mm. uh, around the area where Clayton's body was found. Um, but they said they didn't see a body. Yeah. But then again, this has been proven false as well. Because they initially they tried to say yes it's true, and the police sort of tore away and realised that they weren't anywhere near the stream, and then they said well we didn't even actually make the first statement in the first place, so I don't know how the first statement came out. Yeah. Or maybe they were bullshitting. Maybe they were trying to get their glory, but apparently that's not true either. Yeah. I will give you. Well, I feel I feel like we've already done we've already told everyone our thoughts on this yeah. 35 minutes in about 10 minutes of episode content <laughs> but there is one thing about this case that strikes me you know yeah i think is a bit odd yeah um you see when like someone you see someone dies and if there's a police investigation you don't move the body you do the forensic and stuff when the body is there unless it's like obstructing something like if it's in the middle of the road you sort of have to move the body yeah because there's obstructing traffic this is in the middle of the woods so it should have just stayed intact that whole area could be a possible crime scene they need to wipe yeah. forensics off they move the body before doing the forensics really yeah mm. i thought that was really odd because they're not supposed well maybe canada's different but if it's a crime scene you're supposed to keep something intact as best you can. Yeah. And the fact that it's a wooded area, so there's going to be so many people or animals and stuff going through there anyway, you sort of can't mess with it. But they got... That's... that's When I first read that, I was just like, that's really weird. They yeah, shouldn't have moved the body before doing the forensics. Yeah, that's a bit suspicious. Yeah. And this is the... F yeah. So, like, I know we've sort of, well, I've done the talking mainly, <laughs> but we've sort of argued sort of against all these witness accounts, but that, it's just really odd. Yeah. But, um... Not is, enough is, for me is, to believe that it's a massive cover-up, yeah. but I just feel that's weird. Maybe people should have picked that out. Is that in the actual coming... report? That's in the report, yeah. Mm. The, um, but, but it but doesn't no say that... given for that. No. So yeah. I don't, yeah. It's really weird. Yeah, I but mean, that's sort of yeah. It shouldn't happen, it? but it does sometimes, doesn't it? Though. No, but that's only if like they have to, like it's mm. in a public area or 
something like that. But this was in a wooded area. You just tape it off. Yeah. It's supposed to stay intact. So You're not supposed to mess with, like... It, I know it wasn't officially... Well, it could have been a crime scene. That's the point. They shouldn't have messed with it. And they did by moving the body. Yeah. Unless I've got it completely wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be moving dead bodies if it's an active crime scene. Would they have moved it if they believed it was suicide? Well, how could you... I don't know. But still, there's always some sort of investigation. Mm. You have to at least do primary forensics. I mean, map stuff out and everything before moving the body, but they didn't do anything. It seemed like they moved the body straight away. Yeah. It's a bit odd. Yeah. But, but it, 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 I must admit, it's like the only thing inconsistent I found yeah. on the police's part. Yeah, but it's, that's the tiny bit of evidence they can start off kind of suspicions. Yeah, times. which I find weird because they could have latched onto that. Yeah. But they latch onto these statements and all these things that people have said that really are really, really flimsy. Yeah. They latch on to the fact that her mom, the mother is saying there's bruising on the boy's face when seven qualified doctors of the medical profession, two different sets, three mm. years apart, they could get struck off and have their whole entire lives ruined if they lie. Yeah. She's trusting her instinct, well, what she thinks is bruising over these professionals. Yeah. That don't actually have anything to do with the police department because they're completely separate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think, like, seven doctors, though. I mean, that's... If it was one, maybe you could believe that they might yeah. be a bit corrupt. But seven, that's kind of pushing it, I think. Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd have to pay them a lot <laughs> to get them to lie. A lot of money. Lie. And I, I've heard that this, um, this police department, the... Um, what this place called again? I've forgotten now. New Waterford Police Department. They don't actually have a lot of money. Yeah. Hmm. So how could they pay all these people off? Yeah. It's a bit odd, to say the least. Yeah. But it does make you wonder why the nurse thought it was a beating. So... I think some. I think it's just some people just want to cause trouble or think they should have glory or something like that. Yeah. But because that's the same. Yeah. I wonder why any of these people are saying anything. Yeah. It's just a bit weird. Like, I wonder why the girl said something, because she had the crush on the boy. It makes no sense. Why would she do that? Yeah. I, sometimes I really don't understand people. Yeah. People are the most peculiar things. Yeah. Also, like, for the, the, like the police, or the investigation gave the reason for, like, the discoloration. It was, like, the pooling in the blood but the nurse yeah. she doesn't give any like reasons why she thinks it's a beating she just says she thinks it's well, a beating the nurse i didn't actually get what she said did you no so that, that's what i'm saying yeah, as I, far just as said, know, I just got that she contacted the justice lady yeah but, and said it was irregular the autopsy yeah but then again like she said the ir- ir- autopsy was irregular there was two different autopsies yeah there's two of them and the second one, there's no way it would have been irregular because he got exhumed to have a second autopsy. They would have been looking at that much closer. Mm. So if there was anything wrong with the first autopsy, they would have found it in the second autopsy. Yeah. You know, you have to believe, like, two autopsies are just yeah. completely, like, faked or whatever. Yeah, and the fact is, the police have looked into these claims and accusations because first of all 1993 they had the second autopsy i know that's down to the courts and stuff yeah but i doubt the courts would just allow it based on oh the mum thinks it's foul play yeah there has to be some evidence or some backing the police department probably could have did, protested it or something like that yeah so the body was exhumed they did chase up those leads about the cousins in 2002 and 2003, which is 12, 13 years after the death. Mm. So, if any, if, yeah, if that much time has passed, you're not, and it's a major cover up, you're not going to start ruffling feathers. Yeah. I just, like, 
they, they just won't believe like any investigation by the sound yeah. of it that just doesn't, won't give them the answers they want. Yeah, I feel bad for them. Yeah. Because it must be awful to lose a child. Yeah. And, like, I, you know, I was binge-watching The Walking Dead, and it said something that stuck with me, like, in season four or something. Mm. Like, if, you're, if your parents die, you're an orphan. If your husband or wife dies, you're already a widower. Yeah. If your child dies, what are you? You lose everything. Because yeah. that is the one thing that you've raised. It's a part of you. And he's dead. So it must be horrible to go through that. Yeah. But I feel like... I don't... Again, this isn't me not understanding human nature and human understanding, but if if my child had died and it was a tragic accident, I'd... Even if there was someone saying, it, there's a chance it couldn't yeah. be... I'd probably still want to believe it's a tragic accident rather than he'd be beaten to death. Yeah. In this case, there's actually not any evidence other than some people saying a few things. Yeah. That the kid was beaten to death. Yet, 25, 26 years later, they still don't believe it. Yeah. But I, that, that's enough for some people, isn't it, sometimes? I just, I just... I don't know if it's the fact that... Maybe him dying kind of because, like, he was drunk. It's not... Yeah, it's not they'd rather, the way that you want a yeah. 17-year-old child. Yeah. But on, on, like, on the other hand, like, there have been, like, numerous cases of, like, injustice. Yeah, and, yeah that's true. And you can, uh, you can understand in a way you want to fight for justice. And because you could have said that about a lot of people who've been proved right in the end. Yeah. So what what rubs me up a bit uh, the wrong way a bit with these parents is um because this report came out uh, I think it was early 2015 and they didn't agree with it of course mm. and they said it wasn't a thorough investigation which I've just told you it was 48 yeah. pages long <laughs> <sighs> and I got plenty of notes about it. Yeah. Um, but they said because they're not getting a thorough investigation and the truth hasn't been uncovered, which in my eyes it sort of has, it's always been there, but whatever, that yeah. they are going to be pursuing a civil suit, which I'm not sure if you're aware, basically means suing people. Yeah. So they're going to try and get money out of it. And the reasoning they give is maybe it will, live to, it, it will lead to a criminal suit. Yeah. So, it sort of sounds like at this point they kind of want money. Well, I don't know. They could just want it to lead to the criminal investigation. Well, how many investigations have they had? Yeah. I get the courts and the justice system aren't always right, but they've had, like, there's people that have legitimately been murdered yeah. that don't get as in, uh, get investigations as in-depth as this. People that have been yeah. brutally murdered or gone missing. I mean, like, I feel sorry for their loss and everything, right? Yeah. But I think enough's enough. Yeah. Because I read the report. I mean, I saw the statements that have led to the speculation of corruption. I just, I don't believe it. And you have to believe me, because last episode, I was bitching and moaning about police and how corrupt they are. Yeah. So, believe me, I'm not the type of person that would just believe in the system yeah. because I've been told it's right. But from what I've seen, it's just... it's These people have come out and said some stupid things that they shouldn't have done, and it's affected the grieving parents. And 25 years later, it's st 26 years later, it's still affecting them. And I feel bad for them, but I think it's the best... Well, not the best, but... Yeah. Listen, if their son died, I'd ra if my son died, I'd rather he died from like falling and drowning. Well, it's hypothermia, wasn't it? Yeah. Than be beaten to death. Because yeah. it's very violent being beaten to death. I mean, it might not be as drawn out, but it's very violent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just, yeah. Sometimes you have to make peace with it. Yeah. Because some people don't have peace, and I think. To be fair, they, they've got enough resources to look into this case, which it seems open shut to me. Mm. I was hoping it wasn't open shut, but it seems open shut to me when there's so many parents or lovers or children out there that have parents or people in their lives and they don't have any answers for at all and 
no matter how hard they try, they can't get them because there's not enough funding or there's not enough resources or whatever. So I think the parents should probably try and put it to rest. Yeah. Also, I mean, if it is a cover-up, they've definitely gone to quite some quite great lengths to... Yeah, there's no the way it's... Yeah. Like, maybe if it was, like, a major criminal department like the CIA or MI5 or someone, like, something like that, that have the money to do that. This is a tiny police department in Nova Scotia. Yeah. You didn't even know where Nova Scotia was. You thought it was in Australia. <laughs> So, do you think they have? Do you think they have the funds to actually do that? Yeah, it's just really, it's just so far fetched that they would have paid to have this mass cover up, or these pe- all these people would cover up for them, just mm. for favors, or just because they're helping out a friend, because it's it puts their whole cr- entire careers at risk. Yeah, and the two different sets of doctors doing the autopsies as well. Yeah, like, yeah, it's a bit weird. I mean. Yeah, I just feel it's like there's still not even a tiny like shred of evidence that what they're saying happened. No, there's really not. If, if there's that tiny little shred of evidence, I'd, I'd maybe say it's. I mean, obviously, it, it's it's possible. It, uh, that yeah, it could it's happen. Po- it, yeah, it it's does happen, possible. but I just not in this case. I don't think not in so. This case. And I'm really upset about this because I thought there was like a mass police corruption thing, and I figured this was going to be a really exciting episode where we'd get to talk about that a lot. But, like, when I read the report and read all these news articles, I was just like, this seems pretty open shut. What am I going to talk about for an hour? Yeah. So, basically, that's why this episode has literally been probably about 20 minutes, and then the rest of it is us just talking about Burger King and stuff. This is, yeah, essentially this episode is about how much you love the Canadian police. (laughs) <laughs> really? I don't. Say, well, I don't know anything about the They can't do any wrong in your eyes. I like Canada though, because come on, yeah. they've got Newfoundland, they've got Labrador, they've got whatever this place was called again. I keep forgetting New Watford. I mean Wakeford, something. They had like Rob that. Ford as well. Huh? They had Rob Ford as well. They have a lot of interesting titled places. No, that Rob Ford's the person. <laughs> oh, okay. But they have a lot of interesting things, mm. but. Yeah, I don't know anything about the police department, so I... Well, I guess that makes it better for us to look at it, because we don't know anything about them. We don't know if they're actually corrupt. Yeah. We don't know if they're completely squeaky clean. We're just coming in it with fresh eyes and just looking at what is, there is out there. Yeah. I wish there was more out there. Yeah. Again, I'm sorry I keep picking stuff that don't have Wikipedia pages. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's sad in a way for their parents, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel really bad for the parents, but there's just so many other people out there that haven't got the closure that they have, mm. and yet they want in more. I mean, the amount of money and manpower it, it's taken over the course of 26 years to deal with this case, which in my eyes is, he died, okay? He died in a tragic accident. It was tragic. Yeah. And he was young. He was 17. He had his whole, he's had his whole life ahead of him, and it shouldn't have happened, but it did. But he died in an accident. It was an accident. Yeah. The amount of money and resources that have gone into this for the past 26 years, it could have been placed somewhere else. It's actually ridiculous. I'm assuming it's saying it's Canada. We're paying extortionate taxes. Yeah, apparently none of the things that we need get funding, and police is one of them. So there's yeah. not a lot to go around anyway, and they're wasting all the resources just on this case that is not going to go anywhere and they're never going to settle for the right answer. So I think we, well, we, I say we, but they need Mm. to stop pandering to the parents. I mean, I feel bad for them, but... Yeah, I mean, I think it's unlikely they'll be proved right, so... No, at this point, no. It could be one day, but I doubt it. It's been 26 years... Mm. I think that's enough time for, like, somebody's death de- deathbed confession or someone to grow some balls. Yeah. Or any of the people involved in the original investigation being linked to another sen- another corrupt case. Yeah. Because if you're corrupt once, you could easily do bad things again. And yeah. again and again and again. And they'll they'll be linked to you. Yeah. So I feel like if any of the officers or any of the medical staff or anyone involved in this case did something wrong in the future, this case would have been called into question, which yeah. it clearly hasn't. 
and it's been 26 years. The only, like, scenario I see me impossible for, like, a cover-up is if it was some rich kid. And they got... Yeah, but then they'd just get someone else to take the fall for it. Yeah, that's what you'd think, so... The thing is, if you want to kill people, you'd be a police officer because you'd know how to cover it up. Yeah. And these are police officers. They would know how to cover it up to make it look like someone else did it. They wouldn't cover it up in a way that they will be called into question for the next yeah. quarter of a century. Yeah. But... I feel like if he was brutally murdered or whatever, or beaten to death, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have just faked it as an accident. Because there's so many ways that that could just go wrong. They would that would be the cause of death. Yeah, and they'd just get someone else to fall, uh, take the fall for it. Yeah. Also, if you... they wouldn't, they wouldn't change the way he died. Yeah. Also, if you're expecting like eyewitnesses to say you, you'd seen like, either one of them in prison or someone beating him, you know, I'm pretty sure the police would think of that. Yeah, the, that was another thing I was going to bring up. This girl that's origin, the one that has recounted her statement, the one that originally said that she watched him get beat up, why did they just let her go? Yeah. I mean, seriously, why did they just let her go? <laughs> yeah. Isn't I mean, that like... They wouldn't do that. They would threaten her or something at the very least. Isn't that at least... But she didn't say anything like that. Yeah. Also, why didn't she get, like, charged for wasting police time or something or something uh, like that? I don't... I don't know. Lying, I don't know, maybe she did, because, like, this this report, it keeps everything confidential about, like, the witnesses oh, and right, stuff. Yeah. But I find it really, 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 really annoying that all this speculation is because of these unreliable witnesses that have, like, recanted all their statements. Yeah. There's, like, literally no firm proof or no firm eyewitness account. Yeah. Or ear witness account or anything like that. I mean, it's and it's not just like it, it's not just the fact that it could be police pressure why they decided to recan that stuff. It's they, you know, it's a party. They were probably drunk. They're not exactly yeah. reliable in the first. Yeah, place. that's what I mean. Like the fifteen-year-old that saw the the um, person in the screen, the guy in the screen, she was downing vodka at mm. fifteen. Like, how high is her tolerance <laughs> yeah. exactly? And I think even in the report, it says that she was in and out and she couldn't really make sense of anything yeah so none of these people are reliable yeah i mean and they've recanted their statements i to, i've drunk vodka and I, I, I didn't remember much what happened afterwards so yeah i'm pretty sure i was there when you did that <laughs> i'm pretty sure you ended up puking on me matt thanks for bringing that one up I'm pretty sure I end up staying outside with you because you wouldn't come in in the middle of October and being freezing and then getting sick myself because of it. Pretty sure I went round in the morning and took you out to breakfast and made sure you were okay. You don't respect me enough, Matt. I looked after you that night. I was the only one. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else and, went and on. Don't talk about it at all. Everyone else went on and carried on partying, and I stayed with you to make sure you were okay, even though you threw up on me. Oh well. You're such, you know, Mother Teresa. There again. God. Yeah. You could have been Clayton Miller if I wasn't there. Um, yeah, I'd, oh, I've forgotten the stream that was at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> There's the river. <laughs> There's the river. Oh, yeah. There the is actually tent. a stream by... There is actually a stream as well. Yeah. That's closer to my house than, yeah, Yulia's. Yeah. I feel like we haven't actually... I feel like, first of all, I said everything, and then you just agreed with me. I've said some and stuff. Then, no, no, for the bulk of it. Yeah. And then, also, I feel like we've only talked about this actual case for ten minutes, and yet we're over. We're nearly an hour. <laughs> yeah, we're ne yeah, I know, but we talked about other stuff, like, half of it. <laughs> and we, we talked about how, how I'd say, um, it's time for the intro music in French. Yeah. And then did it in a Cockney accent. Yeah. It was worth it, though. Like. It was worth it. <laughs> I don't know. But I've, I was praying that this case would be so much more interesting than it was. Yeah. I, I don't know where this report was, but I didn't see it in my... Instance. I followed links. Oh, right. And links and links and links. I'll send it to you, actually. It's quite interesting. Do you want me to send it to you? Yeah, go on, then. Yeah. Is, I what, f now? I only literally found, like, three articles on it. I found... Well, it was in one of those articles, but there were, like, loads of references and stuff, so I was looking at the references. Mm. I was doing my due diligence, and 
researching like I did with the Robin Hood one and found out it was real. Yeah. You guys don't research properly, do you? I do. I, do. I used to. I did quite a bit of research for the Le- when Link- there's Wikipedia Lincoln, pages. Lincoln Park one. When I, there's Wikipedia pages. I, I like Lincoln Park. You did the same research for Lincoln Park as I did. I did a bit more. I, I read a few articles. Said no. And I read, uh, went on that website. That was cool. So I love that website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I was, yeah, I was just hoping this would be more interesting. Mm. And it's not. I'm sorry for the parents, but your ca- your kid got drunk yeah. and ran away from the police. Like, why run away from the police? You're drunk, okay? What was, the worst thing they're going to have to do to you yeah. is they'll put you in the drunk tank because you're 17. There's not really much they could do to you unless you've yeah. caused loads of criminal offences to begin with. I, w- I wonder if he has. I wonder what the raid was about. I wonder if it's just... It's it was because of party. underage drinking underage and um, drinking. there was disturbing the peace as well. Yeah. The kids are annoying sometimes. Yeah. But the thing is, it was raided before 10 as well. Like, how yeah. early did they start? Yeah. And, like, seriously, 10 o'clock. They raided at te- a party at 10 o'clock. That's really early. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it in England, isn't it, uh, you're allowed to have loud music on until 11? And that's when yeah, you have to put it down. Much, I think. Yeah, so, <laughs> Nova Scotia, man, man up. Even then, even if it's, like, really loud, you can, the police will come before. 11, yeah, but I yeah. think it was more the underage drinking. Yeah, I think that's really the main. Yeah, and because um, what's the police constable name? Uh, Darren Drinovs. The reason he went back the day after the party, so the fifth of May, was to see if there was any excess alcohol. <laughs> what was he fancy a drink? Did he? No, they have to collect it all up. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I bet that's what. But it, it. but it does actually. It does make you wonder how many police were at the raid and why did they not see his body in the stream. I don't. Well, I don't see it. We haven't seen. We haven't seen the location. There could be like. That's true. There Let's go be. to Nova Scotia next week. We'll be going to Nova Scotia wow. in Australia. Apparently, it's another place <laughs> to go. Yeah. Another place to add to our list. Yeah. But at least it's. It, at least this is in the same country as Labrador and Newfoundland. Yeah. I mean, you thought it was in Australia, but it's not. That, that was. That was only because um, the top of the article I'd read said Sydney. Why did it say Sydney? I don't know, maybe it was... Are you sure you didn't, weren't reading the byline and the writer's name was Sydney? No, I think it was the article was from one of the Sydney newspapers. For, for some reason, they were reporting on why, it. Why were they reporting on the Sydney newspa- in a Sydney I newspaper? Know. Strange. Like, I don't have any, like, UK links for this either. Yeah. It just seems to be so landlocked into in Canada. Yeah. See, to me, this one's a bit like the uh, the Duncan and Blake one. Yeah. You, 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 in a way, you'd like the Blunk, Duncan and Blake. I wanted it to, it to be true, but there's not yeah. much evidence for it. That's the same with me. Like, I want all these conspiracy theories to be true, but then we actually have to do the research and we realise, ah, oh, okay, no, it's not. Mm. It's definitely not true. Well, I, I'm not sure. I kind of want the story about police corruption to be true. I'd rather. Yeah, but I'd it would have been a more be. interesting episode, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. But I mean, than debunking every single theory. It's nice to come up with that the police aren't corrupt. Now and yeah, then. once in a while, because yeah. last week's episode, where we were just slating the police because well, they weren't were, doing basically. their jobs properly. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. I said, I, I'm pretty sure I said they do perfect job. Right. Which Matt, you're never going to go to Baltimore, okay? They're never going to have your back. No, I mean... That's why I insult them, because I'm never going to go to Baltimore. I'm going to go to Lincoln Park. You're going to go Leakin Park, yeah. yeah? And we're going to jig up all those dead bodies. Yeah. And then we should head round to these woods as well. We'll take a look yeah. at a stream and where the party was. Yeah. Go to the nest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dickyville. One, I want to go Dickyville as well. Oh, yeah, Dickyville. Yeah. So, listeners, right, we're going to be out at some point. At some point, you're just not going to hear from us for yeah. a few few weeks. It's because we've gone to all these places where all this stuff has happened. I bet you we're just going to end up going to Moorfield Eye Hospital. Yeah, you might you might hear about <laughs> us getting arrested for streaking around <laughs> Lincoln Park, though. Or disturbing dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> I I, oh I heard that guy, you know, that um, pers- person that was streaking around Lincoln Park. Yeah. He used to flash people in their cars as well. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. stand in front of them <laughs> when you get Yeah, about. he did. <laughs> oh, God. It feels like half a Lincoln Park episode, half a Clayton Miller episode. Yeah. I, what should this episode be called? The Corruption of Clayton Miller? Miller? Um, Question mark? Oh, I don't know. I think we should do a bread reference. 
So no, Clayton's because... brown bread. No. That's a bit sensitive. But... No, we're no. not going to do that. <laughs> no, don't do that then. <laughs> I'm not planning on it. Cut that oh, bit God. out as well, by the way. No, I'm not going to cut it out either. No, come on. <laughs> I'll just cut out all the bits where I sound stupid. I'll leave all yours in. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> learn how to edit. Mm. <laughs> you can't even learn how to record properly. What? I know how to record <laughs> properly. I didn't instruct you to turn your volume down. Well... I, it really disturbed I Chris because like Chris is sound. trying to like Chris is trying to edit your Jersey Devil episode. It's probably by uh, why it's probably not going to be up mm. <laughs> until well he knows it has to be up in, on the fourth of yeah he knows that it's going to go up. It would have been up. Oh, I can't I can't talk now. Chris knows that it would have gone up on the fourth of April because that was a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, it was. So it? so yeah. it will definitely be done by the fourth of April. Yeah, hopefully. It- it should be done in the It would have past. been because the 4th of April was gone. Yeah. yeah. So so he would have definitely done it by then. Well done, Chris, for doing it. But, yeah, because mm. of your little headphone issues. Yeah, but I, I'd, you know, I'd just like to hear the sound of your voice, that's all. <laughs> As to others, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, Emeritians like my voice, so... Who? Hey? Um, people in Dubai. Dubai. That was Oh, I think I know who you're talking about there. Yeah. yeah. That is what they're called, right? You can't call them Dubaians. But yeah, that doesn't sound plausible. Yeah, I thought they were called... Because it's in the United Arab Emirates, right? Yeah. So I thought it was Emiratians. Well, Why I might say Sumia? <laughs> no, no, That's it wasn't Sumia. She said other people said it. Ah. So, yeah. Well, say Sumia and, and her friends. Simi and her friends. That sounds... Yeah, that sounds much better. <laughs> Emeritians. But I like mm. Emeritians. Yeah. I'm gonna, even if it's not a word... It does I'm sound better call. than Dubaians, I think. Yeah, because Dubaians doesn't, it doesn't sound like it could be an actual thing. No. So let's stick with Emeritians. Yeah. And even if it's, it's not a word and it's not what they're called, I'm calling them Emeritians. Yeah. So I think we could probably stop recording about ten minutes ago. You know? Yeah, but but I just feel like we <laughs> okay. Yeah, we probably could have done. Yeah. So um, so email us at um, talkseduction at gmail dot com. Um, you could do the Facebook thing because on yeah. the Facebook page it says that I typically respond within nineteen minutes. But you know what? That person found me on a good day. Um, <laughs> and you could do the Twitter thing. Just tweet us, follow us, whatever. Um, and I'm per- I've got a personal Twitter account because I'm down with it. Matt does not. I do not. So you could follow me, but you can't follow him. Unless you're in Leicester, then you could follow him. And you better fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris is also on Twitter. Laddie Bridge. Laddie Bridge. My, mine's just Tarmin because I'm just, yeah, I'm just straight up. I'm me. I'm for real. Does Chris know you've just, like, outed him there? I don't think he'd care. He might get people <laughs> tweeting him now. So what? You don't want the public tweeting you. Go. No, no, the tweet, the Twitter is fun unless it's a conspiracy theorist Twitter and they just, after you've responded to them once, they just don't shut the fuck up and it's quite annoying. But if it's just people saying, hey, you, your show's good, it's fine, or hey, you could have... Praise, this. basically we want yeah. praise, that's no, all no, we want. No, no, or constructive criticism, mm. that's fine. But, yeah, just let us know. Oh, and, yeah, rate us on iTunes, and you can leave us a review on that as well. I didn't even know you could review on iTunes, but you can. Have we? I don't spend a lot of time on iTunes. Have we got any reviews? <laughs> no. Good. We don't have enough ratings to have an average Ooh. rating either. So, Matt, you better get on that. Me? What, what? I can't do it because it's a t- I have the account. I'm the account holder. I can't rate myself. Oh, right, you want me to rate You want me to reveal us <laughs> and rate us. Wow. Yeah. That's don't amazing. sign it, Matt, though. <laughs> <laughs> and don't say I told you to do it. <laughs> but, yeah, you could do all those things, and apparently we're good at responding because we don't get that many, so that's probably why. Mm. When I say we, I mean me. Yeah. I ignore my actual personal Facebook account and just always logged on to the Door Seduction one. Mm. I lie, I'm not. Yeah. I have an app for that. Anyway, we could have stopped recording about half an hour ago, probably. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I 
I bid you goodbye, and I'm sorry that there was no actual corruption in this episode. Yeah. We were all hoping for it. We'll be be back to the usual business next week. I'm sorry if you, for some strange reason, prefer Matt's voice, and I did most of the talking this episode, but I'll let him do most of the talking next week to even it out, okay? Yeah, well, my voice is a bit too, like, erotic, so it's kind of, (laughs) you know, people don't need to hear it so often. You know. Nothing. I, I like my voice because I, it's like well spoken and I speak English, right? Mm. But I don't sound posh. Yeah. So I don't sound like I'm from the streets, but I don't sound like I'm from Eton or Harrow or Marlborough or those schools. Yeah. I'm in the. I'm in between. I'm what the actual middle class is. Yeah, you embody the middle class. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm what the middle class is. You should check out my bank balance. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We keep saying anyway. Yes. Bye. Bye. At last. Bye. Bye.